tal. Por favor. ¿Alguien tiene el cronómetro? Pero bueno, ok. Buenos días a todos, es un placer estar con ustedes. Inauguramos la conferencia magistral con Monsieur Vincent de Ville de Gaucher. Pero antes quiero agradecer a todo el Comité PIARP aquí presente, como dijo el gobernador. Habemos en el Comité de Puentes más de 40 personas, de las cuales asistieron 20 de todos los países, y se trabajó lunes y martes en lo que es el Comité PIAR, de las cuales formo parte. Les voy a leer abreviada un poco el currículum de Monsieur Vincent de Ville de Goyer. Cuando me hizo, me hizo llegar el, el currículum, pues eran como 40 páginas, ¿sí? Que no me... Me costó un poco trabajo resumirlas, pero les doy una breve descripción de, de su resumen, de su currículum. Y es un honor, y te damos gracias, Vansan, de estar aquí. Realmente agradecemos mucho a Vansan de que haya aceptado nuestra, nuestra invitación, dado que es un ingeniero muy ocupado y que es uno de los grandes ingenieros puenteros de todo el mundo. El ingeniero Vansan de Ville de Goyer nació en Uy, Bélgica. Se recibió de ingeniero civil con los máximos honores de la Universidad de Liège. Después hizo un doctorado en ciencias en ingeniería, del cual también fue este, dictaminado como máximos honores de un doctor en ingeniería. Es profesor, como muchos de todos nosotros, que, que dedica parte de su tiempo a enseñar a los jóvenes estudiantes, que muchos hay aquí, en la Universidad de Liège. Y además es profesor en la alta escuela reputada en París del CHEC, el Centro de Altos Estudios de la Construcción. Trabaja desde 1989 en Grace Asesores, que es una oficina muy, muy importante mundial de asesoría en ingeniería, de proyectos, de estructuras, de puentes, de todo tipo de ingeniería. Es ingeniero, participó como ingeniero, como director de desarrollo, responsable de las relaciones con la Universidad de Lieg, es director de investigación, es coordinador de estudios y es presidente, director general de toda la área de ingeniería de Gresh Ingenieros. Como buen ingeniero y buen doctor en ingeniería, ha sido laureado, tiene muchos honores, muchos premios, de los cuales menciono varios. En 1989 fue honorado con el premio de la Real Academia de la Ciencia de Bélgica. En 2004 fue honorado como el premio al mejor ingeniero en la Asociación Francesa de la Construcción, en París. En 2009 fue honorado como ingeniero para promover la utilización del acero en las estructuras por el Instituto Internacional del Acero. En 2010 fue honorado con premios de Ingeniería de Viento y premios de Asesoría de Estructuras. Ha trabajado en más de ocho comisiones internacionales para el desarrollo de estudios y proyectos eh, como Viento, Estructuras de Acero, Modernización de Estructuras, Estudios Aerodinámicos en Puentes Largos, de Grandes Claros. Es profesor en más de 10 cursos en la Universidad de Lech. Es investigador, sigue investigando, sigue trabajando. Es... Efectos de segundo orden y todo lo que se debe considerar. Ha sido titular y es profesor asistente de la Universidad de Lech para las tesis de doctorado, de la cual ha participado como juez y jurado en más de 20 tesis doctorado y participado como asesor. Ha dado más de 50 conferencias de estructuras en todo el mundo. Ha participado en los comités técnicos para la liberación de las normas europeas. Ha hecho más de 100 publicaciones en todas las revistas y libros y técnicos del mundo. Ha participado bueno, en cientos de proyectos de estructuras especiales y puentes super largos, como el Bósforo, el Viaducto de Millón. Panzán, realmente te quiero agradecer de corazón este, haber aceptado nuestra invitación. Es la primera vez que viene a México. Ha estado maravillado con Campeche, ¿sí? su esposa 
y, y tú y agradezco a todo corazón que estés aquí y bienvenido a México sé que nos vas a enseñar cosas importantes y terminando tu, tu presentación tenemos cinco minutos de preguntas y respuestas y en la tarde haremos una sesión de mesa redonda con todos los expositores gracias y, es, y demos un aplauso por favor a Avanzán para, para que nos sea presentado Buenos días, and thank you, Mr. Mr. President uh, Luis. So, for me, it's an, an honor to to uh, have been invited to your uh, Congress, and uh, I would like to to present a little my consulting office and uh, um, some uh, bridges that we have uh, designed. So. You can see here a, a map of Europe and the location of uh, Belgium and the location of our uh, offices in uh, Liège, Brussels and in Luxembourg. The founder of my office was René Grèche. He was an engineer and also an architect. He has died in 2000. Today we are about 200 engineer and technical drawers. You can see here a view of the people on the last footbridge that we have designed in Belgium. Here are some structure that we have uh, designed and hospitals, the ferry center in, uh, in Dubai, the new stadium roof in Lille in the north of France, the a museum, modern art museum in Paris, drawn by the international architect well known, Frank Gehry, and, and here a an building. And here some stru large structure that we have the chance to, we are lucky to, to design. For example, here a railway bridge in the south of Portugal, a, lo a new lock in Belgium and of course Milo Viaduct and the third Bosphorus Bridge in Turkey uh, near Istanbul. Some bridges that we have uh, designed, for example, Bowstring Bridge with steel arch and we have tried to reduce the bracing between the compressed uh, arches. And you can see here a finite element model to verify the stability of the arches. And here we have suppressed all bracing between the arches to, to, to obtain a very slender structure. Another one, bowstring bridge. And when it's not necessary to, to have bracing between compressed arches, we can yet simplify the structure by using only one arch to support the, the bridge. Here is a railway bridge in Portugal. An arch bridge in Ile de, Ile de la Réunion. A cable state bridge in uh, Liège, in Belgium. With stake, with, you can see here the, the, cable, the stay cables. The deck is a concrete one. Another one, again, a stay cable bridge with a pylon uh, in concrete and again uh, the deck in concrete. And of, co and of course, the uh, Milo Viaduct bridge. We will see again some some slides uh, after. Here, the it's a final project in, uh, in Belgium for a stay cable bridge again. Uh, very special because uh, the, the span length is equal to 600 meters with a radius of 1,100 meters. Very curved deck and with two levels for the, for the cars here at the bottom of the deck and inside the, inside the deck. Due to the curvature of the, the, of the bridge, 
it was necessary it was not necessary to have to have two legs for the pylon we have suppressed it one and you can see here the alone um, pylon unfortunately for political reason this uh, bridge has been replaced by a tunnel unfortunately unfortunately and the third bosphorus bridge and my in my office, we, la we, we like to have exchange with the company uh, to discuss the, the building of a structure. Here you can see a cable street bridge built in 1987, exactly during the uh, World Road Congress organized in Brussels. And you can see here, we have built the concrete deck and the concrete pylon along the river on temporary piers. You can see here a little animation. After that, of course, we have rotated all the structure, the deck and the pylon, to cross the river Meuse in Belgium. The total rotation was about 60, 60 degrees. And you can see here the, uh, um, the location of the bridge during the rotation. And all participants of the road congress were on the side during the rotation in 87. And you can see here an image to, to show the, the structure during the rotation. At the bottom of the co concrete pylon, you can see we have built a cross with two supports. And with jacks, we have put on the, this leg to obtain the rotation of the pylon and also of the deck, of course. And you can see here the final uh, structure uh, today. Another type of erection method that we have used was for this transmission with this telecommunication tower. Its height is 180 meters. So the classical method for the construction is to use cranes. But we have suggest another, another solution. You have built it on the ground. The total weight of the pylon was 180 tons. You can see here the deformation under the dead load. But of course this tower was designed to uh, under the wind loading. And the wind loading was exactly the same value of the dead load. So in this horizontal position, it was not necessary to increase the bracing, the structure uh, for the uh, erection because the, max, the total load induced by the wind is exactly equal to the dead load. So we have put an horizontal axis, axle here and here a cable. And we have pulled on the cable to erect the tower. And you can see here some, some photos during the erection of the structure. Another type of erection method that we have used, of course, is the launching. Here is a bridge. It's a bridge for, for boats. In Belgium, again, it's a concrete one, and you can see here the erection method that we have used, a classical launching. But here you can see that the total weight of the bridge at the end is equal to 65,000 tons. And the final uh, launching step, we have, we have pushed this value of uh, the, uh, the loads. It's a world, world, world record again. Another for the stay cable bridge in Liège, we have used also 
the launching method. You can see here the final configuration of this stay cable. Here is a large bridge in Belgium again. The span length is equal to 170 meter length. And we have used a special method for the erection of this part of the structure. It's a steel box girder. And it was not possible to use cranes here in this zone. And we have used the technique of the pool vaulter. What that? You can see here. It takes a pole to go above the bar. And we have used the same method during the launching operation. You can see here, during the launching of the steel deck, of course, due, due to the, the, the weight of the steel box, we have a vertical deformation, a vertical def displacement. The problem was to, to go to go up, excuse me, to go, to go up the concrete pier, and we have used a pole, you can see here, to go above the pier, with no problem, very easy method. You can see here, the worker on the side, with their hands in the pocket. Nothing to do to go above the concrete pier. And you can see here the structure during the construction and the final configuration of this bridge. Here it's not a bridge. It's the railway station in Liège, a new one drawn by the uh, Spanish architect Calatrava. And you can see here the structure. It's not a bridge, but you can see here that the structure is made by 39 steel arches in vertical plane. The problem was the construction of that because the railway organization, this, it was not possible to interrupt the traffic during the construction of the roof. So for that, we have proposed the erection of temporary scaffolding here in front of, at the front of, of the railway station. We have assembled five steel arches on that and after this we push the, these five steel arches by the launching method. We assembled again five steel arches, we push it, etc above the railway tracks and after that we can erect the canopies. You can see here the first step of these, of these operation, the assemblage of the first five uh, steel arches and here just after the first step loading. And you can see here the movement of the structure the f is the final launching and you can see that during the launching the trains continue and here the final configuration of the structure here it's a ca steel cable bridge in Portugal and in Coimbra the construction method was the classical cantilever one and you can see uh, a video to show the computer simulation obtained by a finite element program. It's a concrete, it's a composite deck and of course for the, in the, for the computation we have taken into account the, the creep of the concrete deck. You can see here the evolution of the deformation versus the, versus the time. We have also used the technique of flat boats 
to put the final structure in the final location. Here it's a bowstring bridge on flat boats, as you can see here, and the final structure. We have used the same method for this footbridge in Netherlands with a single steel arch. The length of the main spine is equal to 200 meters. And you can see here the side walks. You, the structure is mounted, assembled on flat boats. Another technique that we have used is to use the old bridge to assemble a new one. The aim of this design was to renovate this, this old bridge. It's a railway one. Again, it was not possible to interrupt the traffic during the week. The Railway Association in Belgium authorized to interrupt the traffic only the week during the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So, we have used this technique. We have assembled each new span on the abutments. We transport it on buggy by using the, the, the tracks. We put vertical steel frames. We evacuate the buggy. We cut out the old span and we put down the new span and we evacuate the temporary structure and during a weekend it was possible to install two new span. You can see here some photography here for the transport of the new span, the cut down of the old span and you can see here the new one is located here. And here it's a slide to compare the old and the new structure. And for the Milo Viaduct, we, it's, the Milo Viaduct is the summary of this old erection method that we have already used. You, I imagine that you know the location of the Milo Viaduct in France, just uh, um, at 100 kilometers from uh, Milo, we, we can see the famous arch, switch, uh, arch bridge designed by Eiffel, of course. The, this viaduct has been constructed by Eiffage, a French company. You can see here this bridge with a total length of 2,460 meters and with a radius in the horizontal plane of 20 kilometers. The, here it's a slide to compare the, the weight, the height of the Eiffel Tower and the top of all pylons of this uh, viaduct. Here it's a comparison between the weight of the Eiffel Tower and the weight of the structure. For the deck, it's a steel one. The total weight of the deck is equ equivalent to five Eiffel Tower. The seven pylons and the steel cables are equivalent again at one Eiffel Tower. And all red structure here, the temporary piers, the temporary supports at the top of the piers, the total weight are, is again equal to one Eiffel Tower. You can see here a transversal view of the steel deck with the, um, the, the element to be assembled on the, on the side, here prefabrication in the steel factory. The Milo Viaduc location is located here in the south of France but the steel elements were prefabricated in the north of uh, France, here, okay? 
and after that it was necessary to transport it all these elements to the site work and you can see here the assemblage of the different steel elements to obtain again the shape of the steel deck as you can see here there are seven concrete piers with the tallest one is equal 245 meter about high it's a low cross section in concrete with a thickness about, uh, 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 is about 50 centimeter to one meter in this in this zone you can see here the site work during the concrete of the seven piers and for this for the, the concrete of the piers it was uh, necessary to use cranes with a maximum level equal to 260 meter for the crane driver 20 minutes was necessary to go from the ground to the top of is crane. Here you can see the, the shape of the steel pylons, again uh, a low cross section. And here we have the connection between the, the steel deck and the concrete piers. The legs of the pylon are welded on the deck, steel deck, and the assembly of pylon and steel deck was located on four bearings at the top of the concrete piers. Of course, it was necessary to evaluate the internal stresses inside the steel deck induced by the forces from the pylons. You can see here the a leg of the pylons, transversal reinf reinforcement inside the, inside the deck, in here, the location of the supports on the concrete piers. And here, the contour lines of the internal stresses at this location. And you can see here a photo of the actual uh, structure inside the deck. Here, it's again a finite element model to evaluate the internal stresses at the location la where the stay cable is encored inside the uh, steel deck. You can see here the steel, the internal, the stresses inside the, inside the deck. Of course, for this type of structure, it was very important to evaluate the wind effect of, on the structure. And you have made many uh, tests in the laboratory and we have taken into account the turbulent uh, effect on the structure and of course the fact that the wind pressure is not constant along, along the, the structure. You can see here a value, some value of the Eigen frequency and you can see that the, for this type of Eigen frequency the energy of the wind gust are maximum, unfortunately. And you can see here the, some, uh, to give an idea of the movement of the structure under the maximum wind in service, we, 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 would, be, we would obtain 60 centimeters in the horizontal plane and 85 centimeters in the vertical direction for the maximum wind of 200 kilometers per hour. And of, course, and of course, we have also verified the, the behavior of the structure during the construction for the maximum wind for the, during the construction, evaluate to 185 km per hour, and at that time, the horizontal maximum displacement would be equal to 1.4 meter. You can see here a video to show the type of construction method that we have used to put the steel deck on the final location. The steel deck was assembled on the two abutments and after that we push it 
from the north and from the south to obtain the final closure located ab uh, just above the Ta Tarn River. After, uh, just, excuse me, after that, it was yet necessary to erect the pylons. The pylons again were assembled on the abutments. Erect, we have erected, and after that we have suspended the steel deck by steel cables. After that, the steel temporary piece had been dismounted. So you can see here the temporary piers, and you can see a, a view from uh, the top of the, these temporary piers. And here is a, um, a scheme to compare the Eiffel Tower and the shape of these temporary piers. It's exactly the same scale. And these temporary piers were, was able to support the weight of the Eiffel Tower equivalent to six to 7,000 tons. So we have used the launching method. The distance between the two, two supports for, during the construction was 171 meters, but it was too large for the shape of the deck. So it was necessary to reduce this value. It's the reason why we have put temporary supports here outside the concrete piers, you can see here the two supports, and here outside the temporary piers, you can see here the support to reduce the, di the distance between uh, during the launching to 151 meter. But we had a problem for the launching method. The classical, for the classical launching method, we push the structure from the abutment. But there was a problem. I compare the movement of the structure in this slide, and we imagine that the deck is equal to the st a stone. The aim is to push the, the stone. We push the stone on the table with wheels. It's equivalent to temporary piers. The men push the, the, the deck or the stones. What we see we see that we have, okay, a movement of the stone, but also a movement of the table, uh, the deforma equivalent to the deformation of the piers. It's not good. The solution was that to ask to each man to go up at each support, temporary piers, concrete piers, and we have asked to each man to push the structure at the same time. The man is on the table, he pushes the stone, we have the movement of the stone, but no movement of the table, no deformation, no deformation of the temporary piers. Of course, we have not asked two men to push the structure, we have imagined a temporary tools to obtain this movement. We have named it translator, composed of three pieces, a, gray, a gray part, a fixed one, and red and green parts, a move, movable element. We push, and we have here the steel deck. We push the red one, so we have it's a, the lift of the steel deck, supported now by the green wedge. And we push the green wedge, we have a movement of the steel deck. And you can see here an animation, a video of this translator during the movement. Here at this level we have equivalent to the red wedge and here the green one. And we can observe the movement of the steel deck. Here you can see the movement of the steel deck. One problem, another problem at the Milo viaduct was the following one. The assemblage of the steel deck was made 
at the level of the fin finished level of the motorway with a weight of the steel deck equal to 4.2 meter. We pushed that, but after it was necessary to go down with this steel deck. Okay? But during the launching, you can see here a, a scheme of the steel deck during the launching. We have the assemblage of the final level of the motorway, and here the final level of the steel deck on the concrete piers. And you can see here very large deformation. And you can see effectively the deformation of the structure during the launching. You can see here, it's a video to see, obtained by a computer program to verify the behavior of the structure during uh, the, the, the launching operation. Of course, we have increased the vertical deformation to see what happens during the movement of the structure. When the pylon was just between the temporary piers and the concrete one, the vertical displacement of the deck was equal to 1.4 meter. And you can see here the deformation obtained by simula simulation and here in the, on the site work. For the year we have, during the fabrication of the assemblage of the steel deck, the maximum wind speed was, would be equal to 185 km per hour with classical safety factor. For the launching, during the launching, a forecast was necessary to verify that during the operation of the launching, the maximum wind speed would be equal to 7, 72 km per hour with the same uh, safety factor. But it was necessary to imagine any incident stop for any position of the structure during the launching operation for the maximum wind speed equal at, at 185 km per hour and to imagine procedure to secure structure but in that case, the safety factor were lower than the uh, classical ones. To imagine, secu secu to, to secure the structure during the, during the launching operation, if an incident appear. And we have made many, many computations. Uh, we have imagined 200 configuration for this incident uh, operation with many load cases. You can see here the total load cases that we have uh, compute to verify the safety of the structure during the construction. And you can see here the, uh, uh, okay, it was evident, it's evident that it was necessary to measure the wind speed during the operation. And we have made our own uh, forecast by using information from internet. And you can see here an exercise of our engineers during the operation. You can see here uh, two, uh, uh, two engineers against the wind. At that time, the wind speed was equal to 110 km per hour. But during the operation, some engineers were located in my office to to help eventually the engineer on the site to um, understand the behavior observed in the, on, on the site work, on the work site. And of course it was a challenge to go uh, at the extremity of the bridge during the operation. And here the last operation the last step launching of the structure. You can see here the movement of the pylon during the operation, the movement of the structure, the movement of the moon during the night.
gain the moon. The duration of one launching uh, was about uh, two days for a, to um, um, a movement equ equal to 171 meters. And finally, the closure of the steel deck. You can see here the final operation and the final structure. Of course, after that, it was necessary to to erect the steel pylons, assemble it on the abutment. Con we uh, transported by a special convoy of the, on, the steel, on the steel deck. We, have, we had erected two steel temporary columns. We have put an horizontal axle between the two legs of the pylons. We lift the axle and we obtain a rotation of the pylons. After that, the special convoys go out, and after that, we weld the pylon on the steel deck. Here, are some some view during this operation, and finally, the structure, final structure, about the clothes. Quickly, the third Bosphorus bridge is the last large bridge that we have designed, the chance to design located in near Istanbul. The project of the government was the uh, construction of a new ring around Istanbul town. You can see 160 kilometer long. And the total, the duration of these uh, works was only 66 months for the construction of the total rings plus the third bridge. You can see uh, here. It was the result of a competition wind won by Jean-Francois Klein, the director of the engineering, the Swiss uh, consulting uh, office, and Michel Virlogeux. And my office, with this team, my office has made the final project, and we were uh, the responsible of the main span, uh, steel main span, the dyna dynamic behavior of the structure under the wind, under the earthquake. The structure has been built by a Korean uh, company, you can see here a design, uh, design meeting. You can see here Jean-François Klein, Michel Verlogeux, and myself. The specificity of the bridge is that we, on the, on the deck, there are two times four road lanes for cars, and also two railway tracks and two walkways. The total width of the structure is equal to 89 meter. Total length 2,240 meter. The, this part of the steel deck, the main span, is supported by, by stay cable, you can see here. And the central part was supported by vertical angers. It's exactly the same shape. Then, as for the Bo Brooklyn Bridge, you can see here steel cables and vertical angles. We, are, we have here the, here the size span is a concrete deck supported by steel cable located here. We can see here the railway, uh, the trains. But for the, sun, for the main span, the steel cables are located here at the two edge of the steel deck. You can see here the car lanes, the train tracks, and here the vertical angles connected to main span in green. A view of the concrete pylons. And here, some idea of the weight of each part of the structure. 
the weight of the steel deck is equal to 55,500 tons. You have here for the steel cables, the total weight of the steel cables made by Fresinet is equal to 8,000 tons. Static scheme, the specificity of this bridge is that under the, de the train's load, we have a longitudinal movement of, this, of, the, of the deck. Due to the rotation of this element, we have a rotation. Due to the, the, the weight of the train, we have a rotation of this part of the deck with a longitudinal displacement of this point. And the result is the detention of these stay cables during this horizontal movement with the risk of vibration and fatigue problems in the stay cables. It was necessary to limit this horizontal displacement. So, to, and for that, we have imagined a system to obtain an horizontal uh, stiffness to reduce this longitudinal displacement. For that, we have used pendular bearings. We have here the shape of this uh, support. Of course, under the weight of the steel deck, we have vertical reaction. But due to the horizontal movement, the reaction now perpendicular to this surface is, an oblique, is in oblique direction, so that the vertical reaction is, we obtain a horizontal reaction combined with the vertical one. And this horizontal reaction is equivalent, this effect is equivalent to a spring effect. So we have put this type of bearing supports on each top of the piers. And with this system, without these bearing uh, supports, the maximum displacement would be equal to 55 centi uh, 45 centimeters. By using these pendular bearings, we, we reduce this value by a factor three. And with one train, the maximum displacement would be equal to two centimeters. The wind, of course, was very important for this type of, uh, of structure. The maximum wind evaluate for this uh, zone was equal to 265 kilometers per hour for a transversal wind. We, it was necessary to evaluate the drag and lift uh, forces on the pylon and on the deck, of course, to evaluate the maximum wind speed measured on the uh, meteor station with the problem that the, you can see here, the, the um, pier on which there is an anemometer, anemometer in uh, Turkey, but the problem is that the anemometer was protected by trees, so that the measurement of this anemometer was not uh, interest. We have erected our own mast with anemometer, you, you can see here, to obtain measurement during uh, one and a half year. Here, the uh, sectional model for pylon to evaluate the internal forces in the concrete towers. Here, an aeroelastic models of these towers. And a sectional model again in the CSTB wind tunnel test in France. I think that I have not many time to. Uh... Here we have also designed windshield to protect the car driver during the cross the crossing of the of the deck, and the, you can see here. Uh, contour line of the wind speed um, across the, the deck without protection. We put, for example, two windshields at the two edges, and you can see the green color means that there is no problem. But we have had two other windshields here in this location to decrease again, yet the wind speed to protect the uh, car driver. 
it was necessary also to verify the aeroelastic stability of the deck during the um, uh, during the service. You can see here. No, normally, you can see here the video of the first Eigen mode of the final structure. Here, the model in the wind tunnel lab in Milano, in Italy. You can see here the vibra vibration of the, of the model. Of course, the aim is to verify the aerodynamic stab uh, stability of the structure and also to compare the measurement with the results obtain obtained by computation. The maximum horizontal displacement for the structure for maximum wind speed would be equal to 1.7 meter for transversal wind and more for um, oblique wind. Of course, the earthquake was very, is very important in Turkey as in uh, Mexico. And we have made, of course, simulation to verify its stability for this type of earthquake. You can see here the spectrum for these uh, for the ULS condition and also SLS1 and also during the construction for any moment of the construction. With the, uh, you can see here for example f then, uh, that during the Akashikaiko bridge construction the length of the, strict of the main span was increased by one meter induced by a large, very large earthquake. And we have induced in any, at each piers, foundation of piers, an accelerator, accelerator, a different accelerogram. And uh, you have made and you obtain for any uh, moment during the construction. And you can see here the results of the simulation obtained. Of course, we have increased the vertical deformation of the structure to, uh, to interpret the, the results. But the, you can see that the relative maximum longitudinal displacement between the two pylons would be equal to 0.3 centimeter, and the horizontal one equal to 51 centimeter. Here we compare the longitudinal bending moment obtained under the wind in green and in red, and in blue we have the maximum longitudinal bending moment induced by the earthquake. And you can see that the wind induced maximum forces for the main span, but for the side span is the earthquake. The construction very quickly, some views of the construction of the foundation of the concrete piers, of the towers, here, the steel in courage of the sea cable on the, at the top of the tower. The zone of in which the, the main cable are on courage. The same type of view. You can see here at the top of each slide the location of the, of the photography. The, the for, form work for the concrete, concrete deck in this zone, the concrete size pan, the steel deck, a view in the steel factory, and of course it was necessary to erect it by the cantilever method. You can you see here the derrick used to lift the steel deck, and of course the problem was the weight of the steel of the derricks and of and of the, each steel segment, the weight of each segment was equal to 855 tons. Here, uh, I think it's not so important, some photographies here of steel deck during the construction. You can see here the vertical deformation of the steel deck during the continuous erection of the steel deck. The saddle that it was put on the, at the top of the, 
of the steel, of the concrete, pe concrete uh, towers, the splay saddle at the extremity of the deck, the construction of the catwalk for the construction of the main cable. You can see here the erection of these stay cables, of the main suspension cables. It's a video to see the, um, it's a result of simu numerical simulation to evaluate the internal forces inside the steel deck during the erection of the steel segment suspended by vertical angles. You can see here and uh, the, the problem was that the eventually rotation of the steel deck during the lifting around the vertical axle. Why? You have here the segment, of course, are allowed with vertical web plane here. With uh, an oblique wind, the wind induces pressure on these vertical internal webs, with eventually induce, inducing a rotation of the deck during the erection. I had some doubt. It's the reason why I have fabricated a cardboard model, you can see here, with a scale 1 on 200. I have used a classical fan, and you can see here the table in my office, and uh, what I have observed. You can see here the, the cardboard model, the classical fan, and you can see here with any movement of the fan, you can see the beginning of the rotation of the steel deck around the vertical axis. With large movement of rotation. Of course, when I have shown this video to Michel Virlogeux and Jean-François Klein, he said, Vincent, you are crazy, it's not possible. But some days after, he said me, perhaps it would be necessary to do some, some test in a, a, a wind tunnel test, wind tunnel lab. And of course, we have made a new model with a 3D printer. You can see here the model with the vertical angle during the, the lifting of the steel deck, steel segment. And you can see, and we have observed the same movement, same movement with a maximum rotation equal to 30, 30 degrees. So it was necessary to modify the aerodynamic shape of the structure. And the solution was that to put only some little canvas at the two extremity of the, of the steel deck to modify the distribution of the internal pressure induced by the wind that it was sufficient to, to suppress this vert, uh, vertical rotation. And you can see that this canvas has been used during the lifting operation. And finally, the last one that we have erected and the final operation to ensure the closure. And, after, and you can see here the final roads. and the final structure. Gra gracias por su attention.
Very thanks to come. And you have the traductor. Entonces, te queremos agradecer mucho la Asociación Mexicana de Ingenierías Terrestres, Ministerio, de la presentación y para la cual te queremos hacer presente un libro de los puentes de México, Panzán, de Bridge of Mexico, okay. y un reconocimiento que agradecemos mucho por su participación. ¿Sí? Gracias, Panzán. Y espero que no sea la primera ni la última. ¿Ok? No, okay. okay. Gracias, Mire. Muchas gracias. Gracias. <laughs> sí. Thank you very much.